Our next speaker is Michel Lenas, and he will be talking about NGI Zero, a treasure trove of tech awesome. Please welcome Michel Lenas. So hi, folks. Um, I'm very happy that you uh, are going to spend your last hour on FOSDEM in a room with a guy talking about other people's stuff. Uh, so uh, just to give a very short intro where I come from, I work for a small foundation called Enelnet. Enelnet dates back to the beginning of the internet uh, in Europe. And uh, 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 basically what we try to do is fund people that uh, make the internet a better place. And we do so always with open standards and open, open source and open hardware. So these are, uh, just, just as reference, things we've funded throughout the ages. Um, but uh, for us, it's important to con continue to keep in our mind that the internet isn't finished. It's, it's still quite a young technology. It's, it's half a decade old, uh, half, a, half a century old, but we are still rewriting its history every day. And I actually know uh, since, at least since, since Snowden, that we're in quite a problematic internet as well. And, and meanwhile, we've seen more than just whistleblowers, we, we've seen that actually the, the whole ecosystem as, as it has developed uh, it has become quite toxic. So, so Tim Berners-Lee, for instance, the guy who invented the web, says, we have demonstrated that the web had failed instead of served humanity. He says that the, the, the web has become a large-scale emergent anti-human phenomenon. I mean, those are, if you know what an optimist that man is, then those are really, really strong words. Uh, and it's not just the people that made it and the people that uh, uh, that saw it from underneath, but it's actually also something that's politically uh, get, getting some traction. And this sparked something called the next generation internet. And uh, um, we've been involved with that actually from the from a very early start on. We, we helped uh, write the vision for it, which we presented two years ago. And um, of course, any vision is simplifying what needs to be done, but the, the three pillars that, that it is working towards is to make the internet something that is resilient and doesn't break, something that's trustworthy so that you don't have to depend on any party uh, or on any commercial entity or any government to do the right thing because the technology does it by itself. And of course, it has to be sustainably. sustainable in terms of uh, ecology, but also sustainable in terms of economy. So the extractive practices are not part of, of the future that we see for the internet. Now, after we wrote that vision, we got a lot of awesome organizations together, and we, uh, we started giving out money to projects, and in fact, a lot of them. So currently, we have over 150 projects, and, and these range actually across all these different layers. Uh, so um, uh, from trustworthy hardware all the way up to, to service and applications, from data and artificial intelligence, all the way back to operating systems for mobile and, 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 uh, and servers, uh, for middleware and identity projects, for software engineering, fundamental protocol improvements. And I know it's a crazy idea to attempt to, to summarize 150 projects in one go, but I wanted to rush through this uh, because there are so many awesome things and, and uh, literally at an event like this, it would be impossible to, to, for each of them to give a talk. It's just so many good stuff. So instead, I'm just going to give you some pointers to projects. And if you go to the, the, the link of the presentation uh, afterwards, all of them are hyperlinked, so you can just easily click there. And the second thing is, and you're sitting here, meanwhile, we also have a drink with the projects that we're currently funding and all the other buddies, which is upstairs. You're very welcome to join us afterwards. Uh, and the idea is that if you have an idea that we aren't funding yet, maybe you should tell us, because maybe we want to fund it. We have a, quite a, a, a thorough vetting, but if you make it, the benefits easily are worth uh, the, the effort, because it's quite a lightweight procedure. So. And of course, th there were 25 talks, over 25 talks during FOSDEM this year that are related to us. Uh, so. Uh, 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 Again, if you follow the link, you'll find the list of them, and you can see all the recording of all these wonderful talks. So um, I'm just going to snap and zap through the, 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 these projects. Activity Pub. 
I guess many people know what it is, so we, we all think uh, that social media have become too important uh, and too dominant that the, the companies behind it. So what do you do? Then you, you commoditize it, you turn it into protocols. And Activity Pub is, is the big candidate for that. Uh, it was, it's a W3C standard, and so we're funding actually quite a significant amount of projects already. So PixelFed is, uh, well, I guess for most people, something equivalent to uh, uh, um, Instagram. Uh, Funk Whale is a, is, a, is a personal music server that you connect that connects to all of these other applications. Sprightly is a distributed social network. XWiki is one of the best known European wikis that we have, and it'll allow to ingest and put out a similar. Uh, way so we, we are integrating way more than what these social networks are doing we're trying to integrate everything and that's the way we can overpower these these huge companies by collaborating making everything work together uh, open engadina is uh, I don't know if people know the engadin uh, but it's it's a region that is known for in, in Switzerland that is known for its small villages uh, its beautiful small villages and in order for people to be able to connect to each other in these in this scattered around uh, scenery you actually need technology. You can't say, let's meet up on meetup.com or let's go to this and this website or let's put everything on Facebook. That won't work. So uh, they're, they're trying to add basically semantic web features to, uh, uh, to, to the whole ecosystem and build uh, infrastructures and networks among these different communities. So from your local music chapel to your bed and breakfast and make everything work together in a, in a consistent way. This course, I guess many people here will know it or use it because it's one of the, the best known uh, open source uh, uh, discussion platforms. That is going to get activity papized if, if that becomes a verb at one point in time. Uh, Librecast is trying to get streaming, video streaming uh, in, in, into this day and age without having to, 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 to go through a big company that has a CDN uh, and, and, and a big network to do it but instead being able to do this from, well, the laptop uh, here, here in front of me. And then um, what I really, really like is uh, what Bild & Geluid is doing. Bild & Geluid is one of the largest media collections in Europe. Uh, so it's sound and vision, uh, Im image and, and sound. It's the, it's the Dutch media archive. So they have all of the archives dating back to the very first sound recordings uh, uh, and they're going to put everything on Peertube. Uh, and they will make uh, make all the content searchable by enhancing the peer to peer to protocols to to allow for a good search, so that you can actually put up millions of hours of video on there and and see if it scales. And this is this is not a small institute. This is the biggest media institute in the Netherlands and one of the biggest in Europe. So it's really awesome to for to see them adopt the standard and to to contribute to the open source community around it. ForgeFed, uh, ForgeFed is, is a new pro, uh, project that wants to do the same thing for software repositories. We're all uh, using different software repositories these days. So how do we make stuff work together? We can't depend on everybody understanding uh, or building reputation. Uh, you cannot build reputation on a GitHub website because GitHub steals your reputation if, 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 if that is a... If you understand what I mean, if you if you have a project and the first thing that people end up with is not your uh, developer website, but it is a website from a company that uh, hosts your software, just that. But it it, it instantly takes over your uh, your your search rankings because it's so big. So why not let people build reputation with their with their messages, with their with their uh, documentation, with everything, with their wikis, and build reputation on top of the activity pub. Uh, standard and Fediverse Space is a project that that wants to uh, map out all of the Fediverse so you can understand where to go. Now, uh, uh, in the search space, we have a lot of projects because one of the two topics that we're focusing on is search discovery and discoverability. So, um, search itself, the, the search project, uh, is 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 a major and a wonderful open source project that actually is now being loaded with a lot of different projects that build on top of that meta search uh, capabilities. So for instance, they're building a private search. So you have a search engine that you can allow into your own email or your own intranet and 
not have to open it up to the... To, so you have a single search bar, but you still find all the stuff that is private to you. Uh, MailPile is a well-known mail server uh, uh, client, a hybrid client, and that will actually integrate into that private facility. Uh, Nextcloud will do the very same. Web X-Ray is a, is a, is a tool uh, that you can... Imagine you're surfing on the web and you get, uh, you, you, you're, you're going to a search engine. You, you search for some term and you get uh, a nice stack of results. The search engine knows that there's behind every link, there may be 25, maybe 100, maybe 600 trackers that will track every click that you have on that web page. Why is it not telling you? Well, uh, with Web X ray, your, uh, your search engine will tell you what it finds. And you can actually say, don't show me that crazy company that has trackers from, from the Cayman Islands, or don't show me that company that has bad behavior, or show me which other sites that I visited that this company is tracking are, uh, uh, I've already looked at, so that you can get an awareness of, of who is looking at you on the internet. And that's the power of search. It's, it's actually, search engines are recommendation engines, and they're, but they're also a knowledge base that we need to tap into uh, in, in a far better way. We, we currently don't do that, but within the NGI Zero program, we have a lot of uh, uh, extra knowledge. For instance, on green hosting. If a website is hosted in a, in, a, in a data center that is using carbon offsetting, then you can favor that website. So people will get search results from ethical companies before they get, so there's 16 million results for a given search term. I can afford to get number 44 instead of just number one to 10 on the first page. If I say I like green hosted websites, then I can just make people understand that I care about it by, by actually favoring projects that, that, that do green hosting. Um, ooh, I have, see I have three minutes left. Uh, in search there's a lot of new stuff, so IPFS, uh, DAT, uh, uh, so there's uh, projects that we have both on the DAT protocol and on search engines within that. Uh, there's browsers that are implementing these, these new standards inside the browser itself, so you don't need to download a separate browser, uh, and you get a programmable browser that can ma manage all this new information in a, in a better way than a, than a, a, cust than a normal, regular uh, browser engine does. Um, I'll, I'll skip through the search stuff, because we also have some, 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 some really cool applications. Silk Server is a, is a conference server that has Stripe protocol, so it unites SIP, XMPP, and WebRTC. Uh, e to sync is a, is a protocol uh, for you to have uh, synchronize all kinds of things with other people and with your other devices without the server actually knowing. So imagine like a really sensitive use case. I'm telling a server or I'm telling my kid has a phone and if he uses the phone, I turn on this feature that tracks his location because I want to know where he is. But why does, say, a mobile operating system creator notice the, know, know where my kid is? It's, it's in another country. Why should you be tracking this? Well, there's ways to do this, and the AtaSync protocol is actually trying to, to, to uh, it's, it's actually delivering this capability of doing encrypted uh, data uh, uh, for everything that you need to sync with others and uh, encrypting everything on the client side. CryptPad is a, is a, is a, a well-known project, uh, meanwhile, uh, that delivers a collaborative editor for documents. Uh, again, with multiple people, and again, the server is as stupid as hell. It doesn't know anything, and that's a really attractive feature. So it, it allows you to host something for some people without you being able to look into their private discussions or host it for yourself. Um, the VerifPal project is another one of those crazy fundamental things. It's trying to make protocol proofs very simple for normal people to understand and to actually create them yourself, because historically, we've pumped lots of protocol into the world, and yet we don't uh, verify if the protocols are good. We just rely on human engineers to, uh, to, to do that. Um, and the VerifPal project is able to, uh, to, to, to make people design those protocol proofs themselves. Let me quickly, because we, so we run mobile operating system, we fund uh, hard, open hardware projects, and there's a lot more. I see I have 52 seconds, so I'll, I'll rush a little bit. You can find all of these projects, and there's 150 of them, and they're, uh, uh, they're all amazing. Uh, you can go to these, these URLs, nlnet.nl slash discovery, nlnet.nl slash pet. Um, and we just want to thank the European Commission who were fueling us to do these projects. Um, 
And more importantly, to urge you, if you have a good idea, if it's not funded, and if it's anything remotely uh, uh, interesting, just approach us and see. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's you, can, you can do an application in half an hour, and if you, uh, uh, if you don't get money, you spend half an hour, and if you do get money, you can work on your passion for a, for a, long, uh, for a long time. So, Okay, that's, that's basically it. Um, thanks. Thank you.